Today we're going to look at total change and we are going to contrast it with net change. So first of all, let's review what net change is. Here we have a graph which has time for the x-axis and velocity for the y-axis. And then we have a curve here. This curve, of course, represents the velocity with respect to time. For example, at time t equals 4, this uh, is going 8, let's say, feet per second or meters per second. Okay, so after four seconds, eight, eight meters per second or eight feet per second. So if we find the area between the curve of this and the x-axis or the t-axis, so this shaded purple area right here, this will give us net change. Net change means the basically displacement, change in displacement. So the difference between where it started and where it ended up if we found this area, which we've done before and we're going to look at again. However, total change is the total distance that this particular object traveled. So notice down here, this, this shaded region is below the t-axis. In order to find total change, we take any area that's below the t-axis and we flip it and we put it above the t-axis. Now notice this shaded region stayed the same because it was already above the t-axis. So whenever you're finding total change, you want to basically find the area of the speed function. And speed, again, is found by taking the velocity, taking any area or any part of the curve that's below the t-axis and flipping it upwards, putting it above the t-axis. That will give you speed, and the area of speed gives you total distance traveled. Velocity can be negative, speed cannot, and therefore total change cannot be negative. It's like if you're running around a track, suppose you're just running and running and running. Well, your total distance is going to keep adding up, adding up, adding up. However, let's say you run around the same track four times or five times and you end up where you started with, uh, where you started. Your net change would be zero. Your total change would be however far you ran. That's the difference between net and total change. With net change, you just find the definite integral of the rate function. So net change keyword here is definite integral, but with total change, you take the absolute value of the rate function, and then you find the definite integral. And by absolute value, graphically, we mean taking anything below the x-axis or t-axis and flipping it up. Let's look at this example. This is the same example we've looked at before, but we are going to find total distance traveled this time. It says the velocity in feet per second of a squirrel running across a power line is given by the following graph, where the positive velocity indicates movement to the right. So here's the squirrel, starts out zero, it's going zero feet per second. Then at one, after one second, it's going two feet per second. After three seconds, it's going four feet per second. So it's speeding up. Okay, it's accelerating. All right, then it has a constant velocity up until five seconds, and its velocity starts to decrease. Now it's still moving to the right because its velocity is positive, but for example, at six seconds, its velocity is two feet per second. And then at seven seconds, it's zero feet per second. Then its velocity is negative, which means it starts to back up. Um, and at 8 seconds, its velocity is negative 2 feet per second. So it's going 2 feet per second backwards. And then at 11 seconds, it's 0 again. So at, after 11, it starts to move forward again. And at 12 seconds, it's going 1 feet per second. So all this information we want to use to figure out A, what's its net change, and B, what's its total distance traveled. So let's take a look with how to do that. Part A, this is just a review. We're going to say in relation to its starting position, where is the squirrel after 12 seconds of running? So where is the squirrel is asking about displacement. And displacement is just the net change of velocity. So again, this is just a review. We're going to focus today on total change. So the first part, we're just going to find the area uh, between 0 and 12 of this graph of the squirrel's velocity. We're going to find it using two trapezoids. This above the t-axis is a positive trapezoid, and we will use this formula to do it. Area of one half height times b1 plus I should say b2. Real quick. Okay, so b1 here is seven, and then b2 is three, as you can see right there. And then the height of this trapezoid is four. We find the area to be 20. However, the trapezoid below the t-axis is going to have two different bases. Um, and its height is going to be negative 2 since it's below, and we will find the area of this trapezoid to be negative 5. And then we have this little triangle right here. 
one half base times height is going to be 0.5. If we add these three things up, we get the net change or the displacement of the squirrel. What this says is the squirrel is basically 15.5 feet from where it started. Okay, however, we know it had this extra distance that traveled when it backed up. So we will answer that in a second. With part A, the squirrel is 15.5 feet to the right of where it started. Here's the two poles. Here's kind of an illustration of where the squirrel is. So remember, we kind of negated what happened to the left here when we answered this question for displacement. Part B is what we're going to focus on. What is the total distance the squirrel travels up to 12 seconds? So here, what we will do again when I think about total distance, and what we should think of is taking anything that's below the t-axis or the x-axis, flipping it up, and finding its area. Conversely, or, or similarly, you can just find this area and then make it positive. It's the same concepts. So this is a total change question. The squirrel's negative velocity indicates that it goes left and then turns around. This is included in total distance. What I did is I just took that curve, that part of the graph that's below the t-axis, and I flipped it up. Okay, so this is being flipped up right here. Um, so it's the same exact math, except notice that middle trapezoid is now positive 5. When we add it up, we get 25.5 feet. It was a different answer that we got than when we got the displacement of 15.5. So let's go ahead and take a look and see um, the difference. The squirrel traveled 25.5 feet total after 12 seconds of running. So it started out, the squirrel ran 20 feet to the right, which was indicated by that first positive trapezoid right here. Trapezoid right here. All right, then next what happened was then 5 feet to the left. That's indicated by this area that was below the t-axis, okay? But that's still distance, right? It's still running five feet, so it's this trapezoid right here. And then finally, 0.5 feet to the right, which was this little triangle at the end that we formed. And so if you add this, plus this, plus this, that gives you the squirrel's total distance of 25.5 feet. That's it for this example of total distance. If you have any other questions about this, let me know.